Uh, Congressman Mr. Fisher, my name is John Doheny. I live right here in the first New Russian District. John, John, can I ask you to talk into the microphone? Sure. My name is John Doheny. I live right here in the first con Congressional District. And uh, I'd like to welcome all the people who have come from outside of the first Congressional District. <laughs> My question is, uh, at this point, with the deficit projected at $1.6 trillion, the debt at $11.5 trillion, and unfunded liabilities to Social Security, Medicaid, Medicare, at over $58 trillion, how can you support H.R. 3200 when it will be paid for in part by taking $623 billion from Medicaid, Medicare, and at the same time, the CBO and CSR have both issued reports that said this bill is flawed. Okay, I am. Um First, let me thank you for the question, because you've raised several very important issues. I think everybody should, uh, should have the same set of facts. Number one, a perfectly legitimate question to ask is, can we afford this? An equally legitimate question to ask is, to, is can we afford not to do this? Let me try to explain both. Let me, let, let me, let me, tr let me try to explain both. Congressman, I'm going to interrupt you for just one second. We, we got to let the question be answered. Are we all... let, let me try to answer the question. Um, I am committed to not support a bill that is not fully paid for. I believe that the bill, whatever it is... I, what, I have voted... <laughs> sir? All right. Sir, sir, I, I, what I did was I voted to move the bill out of committee so that we could continue deliberations of that bill. And we are not going to deliberate this if it dies in committee. And it's very important that the bill receive the full consideration and the full involvement of the full House of Representatives, something that would not happen Something that would not happen if the bill were to die in committee. Now, we have not yet had... We do not yet have a final bill. We do not yet have a final tabulation of how it's going to be paid for. But some of the things you just said are just not correct. What the bill, what the bill does, it proposes to save $560 billion from Medicare and net savings from Medicare, pardon me, the, that is then taken from that would be approximately $240 billion worth of increased spending in Medicare. And here's where it comes from. Where it comes from, where the 500 and change comes from, is approximately $170 billion that would are, which right now are subsidies that we pro provide to the private insurers to maintain Medicare Advantage plans. We pay 14 cents on the dollar to private insurers to subsidize them to participate in Medicare. No improvement in services, simply 14 cents on the dollar that goes to the bottom line of insurance companies. Taxpayers should not have to pay for insurance company profits. That's one thing. The second, second thing that we do is the hospitals have said that they can save $150 billion over 10 years. The pharmaceutical companies have said that they can save $80 billion over 10 years. Now, and then there's $100 billion estimated in savings from rooting out and prosecuting waste, fraud, and abuse. Something... So...
And then set against that is approximately $240 billion of increased spending to do two things, two things that seniors care deeply about. One is closing the donut hole in Medicare Part D prescription drug benefits. And the second, second is fixing something called the sustainable growth rate, which is the formula that's used to reimburse Medicare physicians. If we don't act, Medicare physicians will have their reimbursements cut by 21%. It's not hard to figure out what that means. It means Medicare physicians, physicians are going to drop out of the Medicare program and seniors won't get the care that they need. We increase the Medicare reimbursement to physicians so that seniors can count on having access to the doctors that they're comfortable with. So the question now, but the larger question is, health care costs are increasing at a rate of approximately 10 to 12% a year. And health care costs are approximately a quarter of every dollar that the federal government spends. And we can't sustain Medicare as it's going up 10 to 12 percent a year. We only have three choices. We, o we only have three choices, okay? B because Medicare expenses are increasing, as I said, at the rate of 10 to 12 percent a year. That leaves us with three choices. One is to cut Medicare benefits, something that I will not support. A second is to raise taxes, something that I will not support. And thirdly, the third choice is to try to, through reforming the health care delivery system, try to bring down the cost of delivering quality care, which is precisely what this bill is trying to do. Okay. Before we go on, before we go on to...